Hi, I'm Hannah, this is Piles of Books, and today I'm going to be sharing my reading plans for March 2024. Okay, so first of all, I think I may be wearing the same shirt I wore in my last video, but uh, that's okay. I'm a busy mom, right? Alright, so I am going to attempt to participate in Middle Grade March fully for the first time. Um, I, in the past couple years, I have read like, I try to read just a few middle grade books in the month of March, but this year I um, am planning to get through as many as I can from my shelves and also read one book per prompt. So uh, the reason for this is mostly the fact that my oldest is in this age group and he is, um, he is a huge reader. Like I mentioned in my last video, he is a, an excellent reader. And... Um, I just have a hard time keeping up with knowing what books that he can read next. So I do have several lists that I pull ideas from, but he has read so many of the books that are um, on those lists. And thankfully he does love to pre or to reread books, but um, it's just sometimes nice to have new things. And so, um, so I do want to push myself this year to read um, pre-read more books for him than I have in the past. So that is one reason um, that I plan to participate in middle grade March, but the other reason is just for myself as well. I see so many great middle grade books recommended that I think that I would enjoy, and it's not a genre that I typically read and enjoy, so I do want to just branch out a little bit more and read some of those stories for myself, even if I'm not going to pass them on to my son yet. Okay, so we are going to talk about um, the five books for that readathon first, and I will link um, the Middle Grade March channel in the description box. You can go and watch the announcement video for yourself and get some ideas for books. Um, okay, so there are five prompts, and I need to go grab my notebook really quick so I can remember what the prompts were. Okay, so the first... Um, the first one is a one word title. Now these are all books that I just picked um, off of our shelves. I have said in previous videos I'm really trying to read from our shelves this year. So I just wrote down the prompts and then I went upstairs and I chose five books to fit those. For a one word title I have Hobby. This is by Jane Yolen. Um, this is, it says the Young Merlin trilogy and I actually did not even check to make sure that this was the first one. But since it doesn't say anything about being a sequel, I'm just going to assume that it is. Um, I like Jane Yellen's picture books, but I have never read any of her chapter books. So I'm going to give that one a go. So then the second prompt is a debut novel. And I had to do a little bit of looking. Um, but I saw on Krista's channel um, that The Penderwicks is a debut novel. And I have been curious about this for a while. Um, so I'm going to do that one. Um, the next one is an immigration or refugee story. So I have Pam, you know, Ryan's Esperanza Rising. Um, I've had this for a couple years and I know that this is a really popular one, but I haven't read it myself. So I'm going to do that one. The fourth prompt is, um, an animal on the cover. So I have Poppy by Avi, I think is how you say it. I've never read any books by Avi, but I have a number of them, so I want to start reading through them this year. All right, and then the fifth one is um, a book you feel like you missed out on, and so I'm going to be reading Hitty, Her First Hundred Years. I feel like this is a book that I would have loved when I was a little girl, and I've never read it. Um, I think I'm also going to read this one out loud to my kids. Okay, so those are the books that I have for Middle Grade March, and I do plan to read more than that, but if that's all that I can get through, I am okay with that. But I do want to really focus on middle grade books from our shelves um, in March. All right, so next I am going to talk about um, the three books that I chose from my list of nonfiction books from my shelves that I want to read this year. I chose three of them. Um, because I didn't read any in January, so I feel like I need to catch up a little bit. Um, the first one is Disconnected, um, and this is by Thomas Kirsting. Um, so on the back it says, we aren't controlling our devices anymore, they're controlling us and they're controlling our kids. I don't really feel like this is a huge issue in our 
home yet, um, at least for my kids. I definitely, you know, I'm looking at my phone way more than I should be. So I think that this will be a really, really good book for me to read. And then also I'm hoping that it will help me to kind of have these conversations with my kids. You know, when they see, you know, it's like when we go out to a restaurant, they see kids, you know, on a tablet all the time. Or when we go to the library, they see kids playing on the computers and I typically don't encourage my kids to do that. Um, when we go to the library, you know, we're there for books. Um, and just other instances, you know, I feel like obviously they are being inundated with um, screens. And so just for me, facing the reality of this and being able to have those conversations. But then also, you know, on my end, being the parent, using less screen time myself, setting a good example for my kids. Um, the next one is along the same lines. This is Growing Up Social by Gary Chapman and Arlene Pelican. So again, kind of just, you know, along the same lines. It says, raising relational kids in a screen-driven world. I feel like this is such an important topic, and I am also looking forward to this one. Then the last one um, from that list is The Common Rule, um, Habits of Purpose for an Age of Distraction by Justin Wetmore Early. So again, this is, you know, just a little bit more of the same. Um... Thing, but you know more just for the adult side of it so um, I read his book habits of the household last year and I that book was so great so I am very much looking forward to reading this one as well next are the two books um, that I am planning to read for the literary life reading challenge so spoiler alert for my February wrap-up coming up I did not finish Ivanhoe um, there's a very small chance I could finish it by then, but I doubt it. Um, so I don't want to read it too fast. I want to be able to soak it in. I have loved what I've read so far. Um, so I am going to be finishing Ivanhoe, and then I will be ready for the 14th century, I believe, um, in that timeline on the on the challenge timeline. So the two books I have chosen for that are Dante's Divine Comedy, which I have been reading along with the um, or not officially, but the hun the 100 Days of Dante. So I will be finishing this um, in line with Easter, which is the end of March this year. And then the other book for the 14th century is The Canterbury Tales. Now, this is the copy that I have. It is a prose rendering of Chaucer's Tales. I did not, I guess, even... I mean, I, I did know, I think, that they were originally written in... Um, as a poem but it just didn't really like occur to me when I picked this book out this was given to me so this is just what I have so I probably will read this um, but I did come across somebody saying a while back in an unrelated YouTube video about how that you cannot read the Canterbury Tales in prose form you have to read them in foot in um, verse because that is how they were originally written so I probably will read this because I have it, but um, there is a little bit of like, you know, the fear of missing out going on in my mind. And so I might see if I can get um, a verse translation from the library. We'll see. So the next one that's kind of a priority is a, is a natural health book from my shelf because I have quite a few and I'm trying to read at least one a month. So this is actually not my book. It is was lent to me from a friend, The Salt Fix by Dr. James, I'm not going to try to say that last name, um, and I need to get this back to her. So I'm going to read that one. Um, and then the last two that I have are just ones that I have just really been wanting to read. So, so I feel like if I put them, you know, like on my physical TBR for the month, hopefully I will actually get to them. Um, the first one is um, Call the Midwife by Jennifer Wirth, A True Story of the East End in the 1950s. I have had this book on my shelf. I got it from a library book sale, like, I don't know, three or four years ago, and I have wanted to read it so badly, and I've never done it. So um, I'm going to try to get to that one. And then the next one is this Grace Like Scarlet, Grieving with Hope After Miscarriage and Loss by Adrielle Booker. This is one that I just... Um, Bought for myself and I am looking forward to reading this one as well. Alright so that is all that I have for you today. Um, I feel like this is definitely a huge stack. Um, it's getting 
almost spring where I live and so we've been spending more time outside and of course just you know being more busy doing things not just like hunkered down in our house um so realistically I'm not going to finish all of these but I am going to do my best for sure. So I am excited to share um, my February wrap up next week and talk about all the books that I read in February. I hope you'll stick around for that. We'll see you in the next video. Dante's um, um, what is that called? Oh, good.